We've heard a lot about the Mississippi abortion case in the U.S. Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, but the Supreme Court handed down another big decision yesterday about a football coach who lost his job after kneeling in the middle of the field and praying after games. This morning we have a live interview with Professor Lisa Roy with the University of Mississippi School of Law. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I know it is fairly early, so we do appreciate the time. Now, what are your thoughts on the Supreme Court's ruling on the coach's prayer case? So I think this is a really big case. Um, it's a big decision for a few reasons. First, because the court hasn't decided uh, a, ca a case having to do with prayer in the context of schools in a number of years, really since about 2000. And so the court's revisiting kind of this area uh, that, it, that hasn't, hasn't uh, really looked at in a long time. So I think that makes, uh, that makes it a big case. I think it's a useful decision because it actually clarifies the law for lower courts, not necessarily with respect to this specific issue, although it helps with that, but also uh, in terms of the test to use in the case of uh, kind of an establishment clause or a you know, separation of church and state kind of type of claim. Uh, but what the case does not do really is uh, really call into question the original school prayer cases. And so I think, uh, you know, certainly for Coach Kennedy and uh, sort of private employees, teachers, coaches, etc., it underscores that they've got free speech rights in the context of schools, that they have free exercise rights, even as they are, uh, you know, em engaged sort of as public employees. But it doesn't call into question, I think, those original uh, those original cases that say that, you know, schools can't require students or, or really even, you know, invite students to sort of uh, engage in these devotional exercises. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here in Mississippi, some people might think, oh, this is something that they might be used to, but we just showed video from Bremerton High School, pictures of those football players and that football coach kneeling and praying. And, you know, this did happen in Washington State. So, um, and you've kind of touched on it a little bit, but what was the primary conflict at hand in this case? Okay, so, you know, the conflict between, on um, one hand, the coach, right, who said that this was his private activity, his private exercise, he had made kind of this, this commitment based on his faith that he was going to, you know, acknowledge God at the end of each game in this particular in this particular way mm -hmm. at the 50-yard line, and then the school once they sort of got wind of this, uh, that that they didn't want to project this image of uh, kind of uh, you know religiosity or prayer. They wanted to make sure students weren't coerced uh, into joining the prayers, and so that was the big conflict I think at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, that the case is brought to the Supreme Court. If you read the court's opinion that came down uh, yesterday, the real conflict between the majority, so the six justices in the majority, and then the three justices in the dissent, was on sort of which facts matter. Because for the dissent, uh, you know, they were very much focused on probably the images. I didn't see the images, but probably the photos and the images that you showed with students there, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, members of the public, and so forth. And they said, look, this shows. That, uh, that, you know, he's on the job, that he is acting as a coach, and therefore that he's, he's, you know, we're really kind of being enmeshed in this. He's speaking for the school, and so this violates the Establishment Clause. Uh, and so that's, that's you know, the, that was the position of the dissent as well, that the facts surrounding those very public prayers where others joined in should be the ones that governed. Uh, but what the majority focused on uh, was uh, that were sort of the reasons that the coach was fired, and so at the time that he is uh, that he's fired, what the school district says is, you know, after we warned you, you still went back to the 50-yard line, mm -hmm. uh, and the coach said, well, you know, I did that, you know, uh, privately by myself. I didn't invite anybody to join. I didn't coerce anyone. Those are the facts mm -hmm. that the majority focused on. So what what's important to the majority in deciding the case is the absence. Uh, of any coercion, or at least no evidence of coercion, no coercion presented by the school district to the coach as a reason for his firing, uh, and then the fact that the court says this ultimately is attributable to the coach that other uh, school employees at the time could, uh, you know, talk to members in the crowd, they could check their email, they could do different things, and so the court says he's actually uh, acting privately after the game, or at mm -hmm. least in his capacity as a private citizen. 
And what factors ultimately led to that Supreme Court ruling in his favor? So I, I think really those, I mean, first, uh, the policy. And so both the free speech clause, because that's also at play in the case, and the free exercise clause require neutrality. And so at the time that the case is decided, both uh, Coach Kennedy's lawyers and the school district's lawyers uh, agree that the policy that's applied to him is not neutral. And so I think the, you know, the, the fact that the policy is directed specifically at his conduct um, and then the absence of coercion, that seemed to be particularly important mm -hmm. to the majority. And certainly if there had been coercion, I think that's a that was a point of co a point of agreement across the court, across the justices. If there had been evidence of coercion where he's making students do this or maybe it affects their playing time, uh, then then that's not allowed. Mm -hmm. And I think he had uh, engaged at other times. In, uh, in some prayers uh, with students that he ultimately stopped doing once the district said, hey, you can't do that. And so I think those things also would have been a violation of the Establishment Clause for the majority. But yeah, so those factors, the, the fact that the court says that this is his private speech, maybe the timing uh, that it comes after the game, uh, that, that students are and can be engaged in other things, uh, that it's not in the locker room or in a classroom or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the fact that the policy is not neutral and ultimately the absence of, uh, or that it was not neutral and ultimately the absence of coercion. Professor Roy, thank you so much for taking the time and joining us this morning. And uh, we do really appreciate it, like I said. Thank you for having me. And I know you have some travel plans today, so I hope those go smoothly and safely. Thank you. I appreciate that.